Oh, boy, huh? Happy Tuesday, everyone, huh? Happy Tuesday. So let's get into it. Joe Biden's popularity is like his teeth at night. Underwater. <laughs> if he sunk any deeper, he'd have crabs. Ew. Because he'd be in the sea. That's where the crabs live. Get your mind out of the gutter. His approval ratings at 39%, even after the Roe versus Wade leak, which was designed to breathe life into his unconscious presidency. It was one Biden leak that didn't demand a change of pants. <laughs> but it still didn't work. In fact, thanks to idiots heading to the justices' houses like they were invited to a barbecue, it quickly turned into a freak show, but with more bearded ladies. <laughs> Underrated, by the way. When you saw the protests, you probably, like me, wished their mommies had been as pro-abortion as their offspring. Oh my God. Why not? That's how you support them. You also were reminded that pro-choice doesn't always mean choosing soap and water. <laughs> the worst stat of all, this jaw-dropping one from NBC News, 75% of the population thinks this country is going in the wrong direction. That's astounding. You couldn't get more agreement from a room of children if you yelled, who wants ice cream and no homework? <laughs> Meanwhile, 16% think the country is headed in the right direction, which raises the question, who the hell is this 16%? <laughs> <laughs> Just as I suspected, a CNN production meeting. <laughs> so we live in polarizing times, we're told, and the polarization is driven by the media that does all it can to keep us at each other's throats. They see everything through the lens of identity politics, and everywhere they look, except in the mirror, is proof of racism. I thought that would destroy America, but instead, it's destroying the Democratic Party. In places like CNN and MSNBC, they're losing viewers. And it's created unity, a near unanimous belief that the country's going in the wrong direction. So congrats to Sleepy Joe for bringing the country together on something other than a desire to take away his car keys. <laughs> so when you have nearly 80% saying we're going off a cliff, that's not polarization. That's a realization that we're heading no place good. Seriously, when your car is barreling toward the Grand Canyon, you don't argue about changing the radio station. Well, unless it's playing Maroon 5, <laughs> then you might speed up. <laughs> see, the party in charge suffers from a weird flaw. It's a lack of imagination. They can't see ahead of themselves. The problems we experience are obvious, high crime, high inflation, high illegal immigration. And yet these problems don't exist until they become political ones. They simply do not exist until they create a risk for losing power. But then it's too late, so they scream racism. What does this do to the party in power? Well, it makes them ill-equipped to prevent or solve an actual problem. Those muscles have atrophied from disuse. And take crime. Apparently, it doesn't exist until it affects polling or their own personal safety, not yours. Then the Democratic Party acts like my stomach when I have dairy. <laughs> you know, once you do it, you no longer have time to deal with it. It's disgusting. <laughs> Their goal is to win elections, not to stop crime. Shouting to fund the police can win big city voters, but when, what do you tell the same voters after the election when their neighborhood's burning like that rash I got from sharing Jesse's gym towel? <laughs> as long as the election's far away, then crime can continue. Anything bad can continue. The Dems being in the majority, Joe's presidency, the Seth Meyers show. He's on late night if you don't know who he is. <laughs> and then suddenly, as the midterms loom, they panic. Crime matters. So does gas prices. So does getting food on the table. Then they mimic Republicans. Hey, we're anti-crime, too. We need more cops. They're like the mobbed-up guy who breaks all the windows in your neighborhood and then just happens to be the owner of the new glass shop that opens around the corner. <laughs> You get this because you're not a politician. You have a real job. When faced with a problem that needs fixing, you fix it right away because you have a boss. You have deadlines, job reviews, and pride. You don't have the luxury of a political machine that makes sure you can keep your job every two or every four years. For Democrats, they only work when they are campaigning. 
And winning an election is a reminder that it's time to relax and do nothing. Just when you roll up your sleeves, they roll theirs back down. What's Joe got to say? No, 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 no. Look, look, uh, 39, uh, uh, th those numbers aren't so bad. I mean, the, uh, I mean, you know, that guy, Brandon, you got to remember, uh, Brandon's probably got a 35 approval. And uh, the thing you got to remember, I'm Brandon. All right. All that stuff. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. You got to give that number to me. So 39 and, uh, you know, Brandon. And so we're up at about 74 and. And then 10% for the big guy, and we're over 80. Come on, man. Yes. I suppose, I suppose this is why Trump came across so unusually. He was always in campaign mode, or what we would call work mode, almost all the time. He entered the job to work. And what a novel concept that was. A politician elected by the people working tirelessly for the people who elected him. No wonder all the lazy bastards hated him. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. She talks faster than the guy listing the side effects on a drug commercial. <laughs> Outnumbered co-host Emily Campagno. <laughs> Even if you hate musicals, he'll make you a fan of Oklahoma. Oklahoma GOP candidate for U.S. Senate T.W. Shannon. <laughs> She aims to deceive, which is why a yak grew her weave. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. And when he donates blood, the Red Cross takes a two-week vacation. My massive sidekick and the NWA World Television Champion, Iris. Emily, long time no see. It's been a long five minutes. It really has. We just did the uh, five, five together. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really great. Yeah. Thanks. I'm totally lying. <sighs> Do you feel the country's going in the wrong direction, and is it salvageable? You have 10 minutes. <laughs> Always hold out hope. You know, I'm an optimistic person, so I think it's absolutely salvageable, but yes, I think it's headed in the wrong direction. And keep in mind that the rest of the 78 plus percent of the country who feel the same way I do represent the lowest marks in Biden's, his, in Biden's tenure thus far, right? But the number that stands out to me is that 65% of Americans think that their level of income is falling behind the cost of living. Which and the most important thing to them right now is the cost of living, living followed by the economy and jobs. It's not spelling women with an X, like right. Michelle Obama would have you know, right? It's not putting CRT in the school curriculum, like Pelosi would have you think. So to me, the, the real Americans whose priorities are liberty and faith and family and freedom and being able to earn your living unencumbered by this bloated government or the creep keep, crypt keeper that runs it, then yes, believe it's salvageable, absolutely. But hopefully because of the red wave in the fall. Because what these numbers represent to me is that the cluster, the last time it was this bad, was in 2008. And that's when Raiders had a 5-11 and 11 record. And therefore, <laughs> there's only way to go up but up. It makes sense in my head. It, it, right, yes. I, you know, the Raiders, they, are, are they still around? Yes! Uh, I don't know. Being amazing They're in every Vegas day. now, gut felt. Yes, that's, that's where they Being belong. Amazing. Yes. In Vegas. See, you know there. why? Because whatever, whatever stays in Vegas. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Vegas I don't even know amazing. what I'm that's Yeah, whatever you know, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Thank you very much. <laughs> TW, yes, sir. good to see you. Good to see you, um, Why is it that the Democrats don't care about an issue until it's a political one? It drives me crazy because it would life would be so much easier if they actually tried to solve things. Yeah, no, there's no yeah. doubt. The Democrats have one motive and one motive only, and they've been exposed for it. Donald Trump did a great job exposing the Democrats, and what we figured out is they have one mission, and that is they are going after our children. The Democrats are after the children of America, whether it's CRT or whether it's this gender confusion, they're trying to create a country where we forget who we are. I mean, we talk a lot about making America great again, but you got to ask yourself, what made this country great to start with? The things that made this country great, I call it the three C's, Greg. It's our, it's our Constitution, it's capitalism, and Christianity for religious, liber for religious liberties. That's the reason this country is great. That's why we have one million people that immigrate to this country legally and 2.5 million that are trying to get here illegally. I mean, just remember a few months ago, we saw people literally 
grasping on to the wings of airplanes to get to this country. Mm -hmm. We saw mothers handing their babies to a newborn, a newborn child to a soldier who had an M-16 on his hip. She didn't know that man. She didn't know anything about him. The only thing she knew was he had the old red, white, and blue on his shoulder. And that was enough for her to know if her kid could just get here, it'd be pretty spectacular. But the Democrats are trying to rewrite our history. That's why they're trying to destroy our history, because they want to remake us into this socialist uh, agenda about looking more like Europe. And we're not. That's not who America's ever been. That's who we're not going to be uh, as long as we have people that are running from the right to do the right thing. I agree right. with you, except for the three C's. Mine are Captain Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> They're <Okay>. not. <laughs> what? You're, you're lying. I love Captain Crunch. Except, Which kind? Well, just the original, except it strips the skin. If you don't skin. have the Crunch Berries in yeah, it, Tyrus, yeah, Tyrus yeah, yeah. and I did like a 40 minute podcast about Captain Crunch. Yeah, I'm on a mission to be the new Captain Crunch. And no, I don't have any it's experience, oh. but it's all right right now. Uh, I think you'd be a great captain. I think so too. Yes, exactly. You know, um, you, uh, the lady over here, Emily, was talking about how they, the, the <laughs> problem with the Democratic Party is they're always focusing on other weird <laughs> like, you know, the ex and women and stuff like that. This is kind of your wheelhouse. This is something that you always talk about. The wheelhouse is expertise. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they live in, they live in, oh, man. You yeah. glared at me. I, I, Do not throw a chair at me. You should be used to the glares by now. We've been glaring at you for, like, what, eight years? <laughs> uh, we don't yeah, they live in the times that, at they home. Live in that, yeah, they live in that fantasy world where there's yes. not real issues. And they don't want to deal with anything. And then even when they're given uh, an opportunity to give solutions, this is just not in their, as you said, wheelhouse. Yes, thank they you. They will not own, they just point fingers. You don't elect someone to tell you whose fault it is. We don't, it's like my mother used to say, I don't care whose fault it is. Who is going to clean up this living room with the broken furniture in it? Yes. Who's going to do that? I mean, my brother would look at each other and be like, I guess us. And that was a solution. Right. Also admitting that we actually did it. Yeah. But we have no solutions in this country. So Emily's optimism, I'm not. Right. I'm looking at the next two years are going to be even worse. We're going to see more ridiculousness, more refusal to make changes and trying to jump on things like the leak and making that the election issue. They are hoping that more people care about your right to choice opposed to high crime, inflation, poor education, not having anything in the house. That's what they're hoping will win the election. So there, there's no attempt to try to fix real problems. They're going to stay over there, and I don't see them budging. Interesting. Kat, um, it's kind of amazing that we almost have 80% of America agreeing on one thing. That almost never happens, right? When yeah. was the last time 80 percent, 75, 80 percent ever agreed on anything other than that I'm awesome <laughs> and that you owe everything to me? That's up around 90 percent. Oh, and oh, have you been listening to my inner monologue? <laughs> 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 Just kidding. I did it all myself. <laughs> um, look, I, the, I, because it's pretty obvious. And I think the worst part is, is that the government is so big that we have to care. Right. I wouldn't bother me so much if the country was going in the wrong direction and I could just say, see you guys. Right. You know, like, I, but that's not how it is. It affects me directly because the government's so huge. If I could just walk around, do my own thing, with my own money, carrying my own gun, I wouldn't <laughs> care. Yes. But I can't do any of those things. So, I, the, but does that really bother people as much as it should? I don't really know. This is why you can no longer, it's, it sucks because you can never be a small government person anymore. It's, it's like, with that, with that, that argument's over. So it's like, if I, like, for example, if I want to move to the woods or whatever, get away from everything, government's still going to come and get you because it's that bloated. It's Till that I big. start the, my new country, Kadistan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's free in Kadistan. That is true. Where are you going to, where is it going to be? Well, I think I'll have to start it at my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you gonna build a wall? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it depends. I mean, like, how much real estate can I get for Kadistan? Yeah. You know. I don't so know. far, I need to own one property. I'm working on it. Yes. <laughs> well, I root for you, no matter what happens. There's something wrong with her. <laughs> Up next, should companies that stock shelves keep their politics to themselves? <laughs> yes. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.